You are watching Janelle Animo's YouTube channel. How to sell anything to anybody. Number one, make it about them. Do you have a friend or family member who monopolizes every conversation? They probably aren't your favorite person to talk to. Add a bragging tone and they become especially intolerable. Just like you don't like listening to a self-absorbed acquaintance blabber, buyers don't like listening to salespeople talk at length about their companies or offerings. What you perceive as informative and interesting, prospects perceive as obnoxious and irrelevant. The cardinal rule of sales is to always make it about your, your buyer. Every email you write, voicemail you leave, demo you give, and meeting you attend should place the focus squarely on the buyer. Constantly ask yourself, what's the relevance to this particular prospect? And customize each trans interaction accordingly. How will you know what's relevant? Number two, do, you, do your research before reaching out. If you expect buyers to give the, their time and learn about your product, you need to spend time learning about them first. In the age of social media, there's no excuse to call or email a buyer with no knowledge of what they do and what they care about. Pre-call research don't, doesn't have to take a long time, depending on your particular sales cycle. As little as 5 or 10 minutes per prospect might suffice. Here are eight places to research prospects before you attempt to engage them in conversation. Number one is LinkedIn. Number two, Twitter, prospects individual account and company's account. Number three, company's press release page. Number four, competitor's press release page. Number five, blogs. Number six, company financial statements. Number seven, Facebook. Number eight, Google, prospect and company. And if you're number three, build rapport first. If a customer entered a, re a retail store, you wouldn't immediately say, hello, would you like to buy this blouse? You'd like, you'd like to start by asking, how are you today? And then what brings you in today? You might sprinkle in comments like, I love that top you're, we you're wearing or qualifying questions like, so you're looking for a cocktail dress, may I ask what the occasion is? Similarly, when you're conducting B2B outreach to a prospect you haven't spoken with before, it's important to lean heavily on the research element we touch on in step two. If you notice your prospect lives in Phoenix, do a quick Google search of new restaurants in the area and open by asking if they've been and what their favorite dish is. Are they from Colorado? Open by asking how the snow is this season and if they're uh, a skier. The bottom line, get to know your prospect before you launch into what you have to offer, why they should care and why you're better than your competitors. After all, we're just human beings. Talk to your prospect like a human before speaking to them like a salesperson. Number four, define your buyer. This might seem like a paradox, but the, sell, the secret of selling anything to anybody is not attempting to sell just anything, just anybody. Okay, whether you work in retail, auto sales, or B2B businesses, you'll have far more success if you're familiar with the characteristics of your target buyers and thoroughly qualify each prospect against the ma that matrix. This is called an ideal buyer profile, and it's like having a secret weapon. By finding the specific type of anybody who is just right for your product or your service, you'll avoid wasting time on poor fit leads. Instead, you have more time to devote to buyers with a good chance of becoming customers. Number five, 
contribute first, sell second. If you're defining your target buyer correctly, you'll spend the majority of your day talking to business leaders who have problems your product or service can solve. But just because you know this doesn't mean they do. Don't jump in with your pitch right off the bat. You run the risk of angering the prospect or scaring them away. Instead, offer your help in the way you think would be most valuable. Not sure where you can be of service? Ask. Maybe you can send along a breakdown of the latest features of a buyer's target car or send them a piece of content that speaks their needs. Perhaps you can draw on your expertise to speak about industry-wide trends the buyer might not be privy to. Pro tip. Uh, position yourself as an advisor who wants to help rather than a salesperson thirsty to sell. With this approach, you'll find a more receptive audience when you finally get around to connecting their problem with your offering. In short, always be helping. As social selling expert Jill Rowley puts it, think jab, 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 right hook as give, give, give ask number six ask questions and listen no matter how thoroughly you've researched your prospect there will be gaps in your knowledge and you won't be able to help the buyer solve their issue issue if you don't fully understand it for this reason it's critical to ask thoughtful questions during your conversations and a lot of them here are some examples sales trainers Rick Roberts and Sean McPhee advocate. How did this happen? What are the most important features for you? Has it always been this way? How should this product make you feel? Zero to death, where is solving this problem? How is the issue impacting your organization, customer, staff? What are you currently doing to address the problem? In a perfect world, would you like to see ha happen with this? And lastly, can you give me an example? Be curious. It's good to have a list of questions prepared as a jumping off point, but you don't have to stick to them if the conversation takes an unexpected turn. People like talking about themselves and their situations, so your genuine interest and curiosity will help them warm up to you. After posing a question, feel silent and simply listen. Really hear what the buyer is saying and don't just wait for your turn to speak. Then after they've finished their thought, communicate their message to them. Ask them to verify if you understood them correctly and pose a question providing further clarification. Congratulations, you just become an active listener. Not only does careful listening help you get a grip on the problem, but it also makes the your prospect feel good. And if you truly tune in, they'll be more likely to return the favor when you have something to say. Number seven, be mindful of psychological quirks. Our brains are wired to respond to certain situations in specific ways. Being aware of these psychological tricks can help you harness them to your benefit. Here are just a few of the quirks relevant to salespeople. Number one, anchoring effect. The information we receive first acts as an anchor against which we evaluate all further data. Number two, decoy effect. A third option can sometimes help people Choose between two possibilities. Number three, rhyme as reason effect. Rhyming statements seem truer than non-rhyming ones. Number four, loss aversion. We react more strongly to the possibility of losing something we currently have than the possibility of gaining something we don't. Number five, peak end rule. People remind the end and a high point within a presentation more vividly than any other section. Number six, curse of knowledge. When someone knows a lot about a given subject is unable to relate to someone who is not as familiar. Number seven, confirming bias. 
we are more likely to accept information that aligns with our beliefs that uh, contradictory evidence no matter how compelling number eight approach them on their level it's it's great when a salesperson brings their unique personality to their selling process but bear in mind you should also pay attention to your prospects personality and tailor your approach accordingly our personal attributes have an impact on how we like to be sold to and what information we prioritize. Here's a brief, brief breakdown of the four main personality types and their preferences. Number one, assertive, interested in results and the bottom line. Number two, amiable, interested in creative ideas and big picture visions. Number three, expressive, interested in people and how ideas affect others number four analytics interested in facts figures in data once you know which category your prospect fits into play to their preferences and customize your messaging and presentation to nail what's most important to them number nine hit an emotional high point there's no such thing as purely rational decision like it or not our emotions color how we process information and make decisions with this in mind salespeople who appeal solely to their buyer's logic are doing themselves a disservice every sales message presentation and meeting should speak to the prospects emotions as well as their rational in mind according to sales expert J joffrey james the following six emotions impact decision making. Number one, greed. Number two, fear. Number three, altruism. Number four, envy. Number five, pride. And number six, fame. Some of this unpleasant feelings you don't want buyers associating with you or your company. So make sure to use a light touch when making emotional appeals. In addition, don't try to bring forth all these feelings. Choose one or two that will resonate and subtly mix them in. Number 10, remember you're selling to a person. When you're sending countless outreach emails each and every day, it's easy to forget that leads are people, but they are and they want to be treated as such. Use yourself as a litmus test. Would you like getting this email? Would you appreciate this voicemail? If not, there's a good chance your buyer won't either. It's important to be professional in sales, but it's also important to be personable. Buyers have lives outside of work and things they're passionate about that have nothing to do with their jobs. Build real rapport with your prospects by letting the conversation drift to the personal every once in a while it doesn't have to be and it shouldn't be all business all the time here are some tips to keep in mind to keep in mind when you're selling online number one keep it personal don't forget even though you're selling online you're selling to a person make your make sure your website landing pages forms emails and call to action buttons are tailored to the audience you're trying to reach. Maintaining a human aspect to your communications increase the likelihood of prospects engaging with you and your product. Number two, provide lots of detail. When you're selling online, it's essential to provide in-depth information about the product you're selling. What are the dimensions of the product? Does it come in different colors and sizes? Include a specific detail so prospects know exactly what they're buying from you. Number three, now communicate the product's value. What value does your product provide to the customer? And what differentiates it from the competitors? Make sure the product you're offering and its price point are just right for the market you're selling to. When prospects understand the value of your product, they will know they're receiving a positive return to their hard-earned money. 
Create, number four, create a sense of urgency. Once you've communicated the value of, Barah, of your product, how do you encourage your prospect to buy? Without a sales call or a conversation with the prospect, it can be challenging to communicate why they should buy you. To combat this, try offering a limited time offer or discount. For example, limited edition available while supplies last. 30% discount this week and only last day buy and receive a gift free gift. Number five, build an email list. How will you communicate future offers and new product releases to prospective or current customers? This is where an email list can come in handy. Include an email subscription button or use a free form builder to create a way for visitors to directly sign up for your mailing list. As people convert on your offers and share your emails with friends, family, and colleagues, your email list group will grow and the number of sales will likely to follow suit. By applying the steps above, you'll be able to sell anything to anyone. Thank you for watching Janelle Animal's YouTube channel. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and ring the bell icon. Thank you so much and God